have you ever just sat outside, kind of looked up and thought, what is out there for me to view tonight? Well, uh, we're going to talk with Michelle Nichols, the Director of Public Observing at the Adler Planetarium, because there's some pretty cool things that are happening in the night sky. Thank you for your time. Sure, anytime. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, so I see two comets and a meteor shower. How often do we get this kind of viewing? Oh, gosh, not that often. Um, even just to get one comet and a meteor shower <laughs> is pretty rare, but to get two, yeah, it's even rarer. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty fun to have some interesting stuff to look at in the sky. Yeah, and these are newly identified comets. Explain that to me. Sure. So we have uh, folks with telescopes, either automated scopes or people uh, pointing them themselves, looking for stuff all around the sky. And earlier in January, there was a comet discovered, and there have been many since then, but uh, one in January and then one in September. And both of these happen to be at their brightest about right now. And just a coincidence that that's happening at the same time. Um, so, yeah, it's um, uh, both of them are going to be visible in the um, uh, early evening sky after sunset. So we can we can talk a little bit more about where exactly you want to look for that. So go right ahead. Yeah. So it's Comet Lemon and Comet mm -hmm. Swan. Where do we come up with these names? <laughs> <laughs> so comets are either named for the person who discovers them or in the case of an automated telescope, the name of the telescope. So these two are named for the telescope system that found them. So those kind of sound like strange names, but yeah, in this case, it's named for, for telescopes. All right, yeah. And go ahead and, and tell us the prime time for viewing. Where do we need to be? What time do we need to be there? Okay, so best place to go is out where it's dark. Um, these comets are not, terribly bright i mean they are bright compared to most others but um you're still going to be aided by a pair of binoculars if you happen to have one um so go out where it's dark away from light pollution if you can about an hour after sunset face west a little bit to the northwest maybe 15 ish degrees above the horizon um you'll you'll see a fuzzy thing and that fuzzy thing would be comet lemon another easy way to find it over the next couple days look for the big dipper you got the curve of the handle of the dipper the curve of the handle of the dipper points to a star that star's name is arcturus comet lemon will kind of be in between the end of the handle of the dipper and Arcturus. So look for a fuzzy thing. Um, and that'll be the brighter of the two, um, of the two comets. The other one, Comet Swan, same time, about an hour-ish after sunset, about a third of the way up in the sky to the southwest. That one's going to be harder to find because it's dimmer. Mm. Um, so this is where a pair of binoculars are really going to help you a lot. What if we only have our iPhones? <laughs> uh, oh, actually, that's a great question um your phone might actually see it before you even see it with your eyes so uh point your phone steady yourself like put your elbows up against on a fence post or up against a tree or some way to steady your hands really really well and then take at least about a three to five second exposure lots of our cameras on our phones do that now they'll automatically adjust for the light levels and that'll allow you to take a longer exposure image and so if you do that you might actually see the little fuzzy thing in the sky so uh try a picture to the northwest first kind of low that'd be comet lemon and a little bit higher in the sky to the southwest uh at the same time that would be comet swan all right uh anything that could hamper this you know i don't want to like jazz people up and then they don't know like uh something you know what, what could hamper our ability to see these Two things, the weather, of course. If it's cloudy, nobody's going to see anything. Um, but the other is light pollution because comets are already harder to find because they're diffuse. They're, the light is kind of spread out a little bit. So it's not like seeing a star, which is just going to be easier on your eyes to be able to see it. Um, so they're already going to be relatively dim. And having that expectation, these are not blazingly bright objects, but they are too comets that are just a little bit easier than your average run-of-the-mill really really dim comet that you need a big telescope in order to see you at least have a chance of being able to see it so try your phone try some binoculars get out under a dark sky if you can 